Welcome, I'm Rogers Anderson. I'm Williams County's mayor, and as we travel throughout the county now uh, and try to find those people that have contributed and made a difference to Williams County, I've uh, got a face on here today that a lot of people will recognize in Julian Bitt. Thanks for being with us today. Well, it's great to be here. It's always fun to be with you and <coughs> look forward to visiting with you throughout our conversation. You know, we were talking right before we went on uh, about some very uh, noteworthy men and women that have careers have started or uh, passed through and you and I happen to be one of those that passed through. <laughs> we <And> did. <laughs> I was not born in Williamson <laughs> County. I love Williamson County and I know your early careers you really came here to teach school at BGA That's right. um, but that kind of took a different twist along the way so tell us a little bit about Julian Bibb where you started how you met your lovely wife and and you can brag about your grandchildren, but you ain't got near as many as I got, so don't start that. I'm trying to catch up to you. I know you are. Talk to us a little bit about who you are, where you came from, and your background. Well, I'm, I'm delighted to. I, I grew up in North Alabama in Decatur, and um, several changes of life took place. I was probably headed to Tuscaloosa until I took a church a group visit up to a place called Sewanee, Tennessee, and saw the university up there and fell in love with Swanee and ended up going to school there. Well, that may have been faded because that's where I ran into Jane. And uh, uh, I'm quick to admit I fell in love at first sight. And uh, so Jane and I moved to, to uh, Franklin in 1974 and I was hired to teach 11th grade English at Battleground Academy. And I was 23 years old. <laughs> Uh, I think I looked about as young as my students, but I had a great, uh, a great time teaching. It was a wonderful experience, uh, I, and it got me to Franklin. Jane and I lived in an apartment out on uh, Boyd Mill Avenue, and uh, Jane took a job with the Bank of College Grove. Now, that'll be a real test for people if they can remember the Bank of College Grove. The, uh, that, that year was a, a very sweet year in our life, and uh, I made friends, um, and especially some of the students that have been friends of mine ever since. But after, uh, after teaching, I um, went to Vanderbilt Law School and lived here in Franklin while I did. I would, uh, Jane and I had one car, so since she was earning a paycheck, she had it. So I would walk down to uh, what was the old corner drug, which is Starbucks now yeah. on the at Five Points and ride the inner urban bus down 21st Avenue to law school. And Jane it would come pick me up after classes were over each, each day. And, uh, but when I got ready to, to uh, become a lawyer, I had not really thought about where am I going to live, where am I going to practice law. I had not uh, seen myself living in Franklin. I just hadn't had a very good vision. But you know, in, in life, one of the great things uh, that happens to you is uh, when, you, when you're married to the right person, they have a pretty good vision. And so one night I walked in to talk to Jane about, hey, where do we want to live and where should I go get a job being a lawyer? And Jane said, well, why pick Franklin? I want to live here. And it was the greatest, Roger's the greatest mm -hmm. decision. And uh, that very day, I went and called the only lawyer I knew, and he had been former chair of the board at BGA, a man named Charlie Warfield, mm -hmm. and uh, he hired me, and I went to work, and I've been at that law firm. My first day of uh, work was May 16th, 1977, and so I've been there 40 years, and it was has been a great uh, place to practice law, and a lot of my practice has centered in Franklin, and uh, and what a great experience that's been. When you think about those early days and your experiences, um, they kind of crafted and carved out uh, the Bibb family for this area. Um, and you've, you talked about the, the relationships you formed with Charlie and some of those other men and women that went through the BGA. Where did you develop the love for this preservation and, this, and the history that you have? Was, you, you know, you were talking about teaching English. 
<laughs> That's right, I did. Yeah. Where, Beowulf and Shakespeare. Yeah, and Shakespeare. I, <laughs> I don't know that I've ever heard you recite any of Shakespeare. Or, <laughs> you won't hear me this morning. Uh, or Othello or any of those. And um, Your age and my age are very similar. And um, they just didn't make cliff notes uh, for, for Shakespeare. <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> and your, your teachers knew that real quick. So where was this love for preservation? Where did it develop? Was it uh, because you got here a few years ahead of myself, and Franklin as we know it today is not the Franklin of 40 years ago. No, that's, that's right. From a physical structure, the buildings are still there, but it's changed enormously. So where was the love that Julian Bibb formed for this? history side and the preservation side and just this involvement um, that you have now. Well, you know, it, 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 that's interesting and I, because I can trace, um, I think I really can trace that. I, I, I came wired that way in a sense as a, as a little boy um, and that was uh, due to the influence of my grandmothers. Uh, my sweet grandmothers loved me and so when you're raised in that really sweet grandparent environment and they liked history and they liked family history and uh, they also <laughs> liked history in general but one of the fun things for me is that my grandmothers were intent on showing me the uh, importance of history my my grandmother uh, who lived in Lawrenceburg Tennessee was actually a, uh, born and raised in Springfield Massachusetts and all of her uh, line her grand fathers before her and her father and, and after her, uh, the men in her family had all uh, served in the uh, United States military, in the Army, and her, her dad had gone to West Point. But she uh, wanted to take me to see places that were important in the formation of America. And she was uh, really interested in the Civil War, and uh, her relatives had fought for the Union, and so she would take me to Union victories. And so she took me to Shiloh, and she, the first time I ever came to Franklin, she took me to the Carter House, and she took me to Nashville, and she took me to Stones River. And, uh, you know, I, I was probably a nerd back then. I may, I may still be, but I would, I would write her letters as a 9- and 10-year-old, thanking her for the trip and talking about what I see. And when Shiloh was celebrating its uh, 150th, um, I was at an event prior to that, um, and I was asked to give a talk, and I read the letter I wrote my grandmother uh, 50 years <laughs> earlier and uh, about my experience at Shiloh. And uh, Jane uh, found the letter I had written uh, about my visit to the Carter House one time when we were uh, announcing a battlefield development activity there. I in addition to that, um, so that love of history came, uh, I think, from them. And then in, in uh, 1970, I had an experience that was also life-forming, and it was really a, uh, an experience about the conservation and preservation of land. Um, and in, in uh, April of 1970, I kept seeing posters all over um, school. I was, in April of 1970, I was, 17 and a freshman at college and these posters all were inviting us to come participate in an event that had never happened before called Earth Day. And so uh, there, there were a lot of folks, at, a lot of students at Sewanee that thought Earth Day was something to go participate in. Uh, I think there was a fairly small group of us, but we were mixed in with farmers in the community, professors who saw that as an important uh, statement and I got saddled with this guy named Charles Harrison who became until his death a number of years ago one of my great mentors and all day long I would ride around with him that day Earth Day planting trees at Swanee now if you've ever been to Swanee you know it's 13,000 acres of trees That's right. and so you're wondering what are you doing but he would just talk and he wasn't trying to, to um, uh, tell you what to do. He was just talking about life and he was talking about uh, the environment and he was talking about forestry and he was talking about people and 
human beings and how important uh, taking care of the earth is to that. And that influenced me. Well, and that kind of leads us up to this era we're in now in 2017. When, when I moved here, got here in about 1980, late 79, and already you were beginning to see, I mean, I realize you're working, you're having to feed your family, and, and um, your, your career's going, your family's beginning to go, but already in those early days, and certainly towards the latter part of 80s and 90s, your name began to surface with a lot of preservation issues. Your name began to surface with uh, saving uh, certainly Civil War uh, historical sites or battlefields and you know 15 years later 20 years later you see some of those early seeds you were planting that were beginning to to grow and sprout and today Williamson County when you leave this area um, you don't have to explain where Franklin Tennessee is on the map to most people anymore and they will tell you, uh, um, some will talk about the preservation, the historical side, others talk about the public education side. Whether it's public education or private education, Franklin um, Special School District, it's education for our children. Right. And that is so important so that when you and I got here, uh, there wasn't a place for our children after they uh, graduated from high school, went away to school. There wasn't any place for them to come to work. Uh, That's right. Unless you owned the business, unless you were Mom and Pop 101 Main Street. Uh, yes. If you know, if your children went away, there was no place for them to come back to work. For generally speaking, but that's all changed, Julian. And it is. It's it's changed because of many people, but. And it's, it's important, and we were <clears throat> talking about recently about the retirement of Mary Pierce. She brought a lot to the table in those early days. I remember her twisting my arm as a young <laughs> county commissioner. Bob Ring is the county executive then, talking about this project on Main Street, streetscape, and how it was going to change the world. Well, how are bricks going to change the world? <laughs> But she had that vision, and people probably laughed and scoffed at her. But now, some 30, some odd years, 40 years later, you see the development of those early days and what it can be. And, and I suspect it's going to be that same way in the history side. Well, I, I think it will be, too. One of the things that's been interesting, Rogers, about being involved in the Civil War battlefield preservation effort has been... The, the incredible national attention that we have. Now, the idea for doing uh, battlefield preservation in this big way had leaked out um, early in some groups, uh, Save the Franklin Battlefield with Sam Huffman and others had, Good man. had an idea. And uh, there was a time period uh, that the Heritage Foundation bought the property where the cotton gin was on Carter Avenue, and I mean on Columbia Avenue. Uh, but the, the, the big step really happened in 2004 when Robert Hicks and a group of people got together at Carton and talked about reclaiming the battlefield, which obviously had been developed with golf courses and sure. retail centers and pizza huts and dominoes and office buildings and houses. And that effort has been um, just a fantastic effort. I, I think the, the biggest shot in the arm that we got uh, in terms of credibility came in 2005 when the National Geographic featured Franklin and what we were doing. They did an article on America's uh, battlefields and, their, and how they were threatened. And their presentation was going to be on the Franklin piece about how this was a community that had lost its, its historical soul, mm -hmm. that it had paved it over with a pizza hut. And a, strip center and um, but when they uh, visited us um, we said hey you're missing the bigger story there's this movement that started to reclaim the battlefield so that it can become an educational and a tourist experience in addition it has a, a side effect of being a public park and uh, they stayed and talked to folks and got it and and so when Franklin so Franklin 
was featured along with Gettysburg and Antietam and all these other battlefields in that article. Uh, then uh, Marketplace, the National Marketplace radio show, did a feature on us. And all of a sudden, credibility came into that. And, and uh, a couple of years ago, we had the board of the Civil War Trust, which is a 60,000 member organization out of Washington, led by a man named Jim Lighthizer here in town. And he had his former, some of his former uh, executives uh, there, former board chairs. They were amazed at Franklin. I, I can remember we were standing uh, out uh, near Carton where the battlefield park had been developed, and here comes a TMA bus. And I said, you see that bus? And they said, yes. I said, that's public transportation, and this is one of its stops. They were just amazed. And the, in 2004, we were bragging uh, that we were bringing 7,000 people to Franklin for a tourism experience. And at, at the end of 2016, we were up to 120,000 a year on, on that type of traffic. It, it's been just an incredible transformation and uh, fun to work on. Well, and, <clears throat> and you've been an integral part of that, but at the same time, you can't lead every single point like a military leader. You're <laughs> smart right. enough to figure that out. What do you, as you look in your crystal ball of, or your Ouija board, whatever you work off from, um, what do you see in 10 years for the historical um, landscape? We know, I'll give you time to kind of think about this, but we know that our population in the turn of the turn of the century uh, was in the 160. We're up to 210 now. Right. Uh, two, two, um, 210,000 people plus. <clears throat> we had 183,000 people right at 2010. So we're we're seeing a growth of about 40,000 people, 45,000 people over the last six or seven years. We are being told by those people that make those predictions that by the year 2040 we'll have close to 400,000 people. That the Middle Tennessee area as a whole uh, will grow by several million people. Some people have even gone so far as to say that Williamson County will be the size of Hamilton County, Chattanooga in that period of time or larger because of the diversity. And diversity in this case means the job markets and right. <clears throat> and so there's a great push on by the CVB, the Convention uh, Visitors Bureau, and, which you've served on and know very um, so succinct, succinctly about how that works. So when people come to town, and many other things are going to change, they're coming here for our schools and the quality of life and and tourism fits into that. Now I like tourism because they come here. They stay here, they spend their dollars here, and out the door they go. We don't have to continue building those school buildings. Right, that's right. I say that with a smile on my face, but tourism's big business. And tourism to someone in Virginia may be totally different to someone in Arizona. Yeah. <clears throat> but when they're here, we have to capture them. And I think this preservation, I believe in my heart that uh, the preservation, whether you're talking about the battlefields or you're talking about a Harlansdale or you're talking about many of the other areas that we've got um, throughout our county, but also all throughout the South, that if you can capture them for a day or two and they're here on a week's vacation, that's, that's good. Yes. That's good dollars for our community. They're clean dollars for our community. They bring traffic. But it's the right thing to do for your community that's growing and for people who come here. So what's it going to look like in 10 years? I think it's going to be even better. I, I, I do think that we are on track. Um, I think the track is 16 years to be a, have a population bigger than Hamilton County cool. and Chattanooga. And I, I think we are on that track. And we already, thanks to good leadership of you and so many people, our capital asset value is already exceeds Hamilton County. And it's, it's, when you think about that, it's amazing from those days of 1974. Yeah, really. Uh, but 
I, I think that will, I think growth will continue to happen. Good jobs will continue to happen. Our schools will still be the top schools. And, but people do care about the sense of place they live in. And the sense of place is wrapped up with how they see their community. And so they see it as a good education place and a good place to have a job. And there's good government and safety issues are covered. But they also like to see recreational opportunities and historic opportunities. And so I, I think we'll continue to expand. One, and, and in that sense, I think there'll be the battlefield efforts will continue to reclaim properties. It's, it's difficult. There's a property under contract now on Columbia Avenue. It's a million three. It's less than a, an acre of land. So when you're buying up improved property mm. to create a battlefield park, that's very expensive. But, but we will also see other parks expand. The wonderful park that's uh, located off the Natchez Trace that, that you and the county put together. And I was, had fun being on that committee in those early days. Uh, that's going to be a great park. What's happening at Academy Park uh, on Columbia Avenue is incredible for our uh, citizens. Harlansdale will continue to uh, build out. There will be other parks that, that ar arise. And uh, the Friends of Franklin Parks organization is getting more and more involved with city parks. And uh, gosh, they've brought such great uh, attractions in their, to the horse arena out at Harlansdale. One of the things that I, I'm excited about, because I think it will develop, and it's got to develop in the right way, because if it develops in the wrong way, it's too uh, controversial and it's uh, not the right thing to do. But it's the development of a of river walk trail mm -hmm. along the Harpeth River. I can remember when I was president of the Heritage Foundation one year, we were talking about the Harpeth River and the need for a river walk. Seems like we've always talked about mm, that. Seems like it. And we took a survey. We, Of course, it was a... A t totally informal, unprofessional survey, but we went downtown and asked people walking around downtown, do you know where the Harpeth River is? And 70% of them didn't. Now you're talking about it being on 3rd third, third and 4th Avenues and you didn't yeah, know. A good strong baseball Harpeth player could throw the water, throw the ball to the water. Exactly. But, but, the, but the way to develop a trail is to, to do, I think, what we did when we started working on Main Street. One, one of my favorite stories about those early days when, when Rudy and then Mary were leading the charge, Ed Silva on uh, Main Street, and we were appearing at the Board of Mayor and Alderman talking about putting in street trees and sidewalks and brick pavers and putting the utilities underground and the bricks and how that was going to transform Franklin. What we act, because it was controversial, what we actually did is we built quote, a replica. And so if you go to the mercantile today, you'll see that those street trees are bigger. We didn't have the underground utilities because they were, right. the trees were across the street. And you'll see the sidewalk is wider. That was the demonstration venue for what Main Street was going to look like. And in, in my mind, the river walk is the same way. If we could um, take the river walk from Puckett's Boathouse and run it toward the rec center, um, through that area where there's not any opposition, and Chestnut Bend has a, a nice walkway that the county, I think, uh, participates in. And uh, John Schroer at TDOT has talked about being able to build a connector bridge from around the Chestnut Bend property where the city has uh -huh. a piece of property across into Harlansdale and to, to use some uh, monies that have been set aside for that if we can match it with the city and and not I think if we have that trail running to the rec center and people get used to it then other areas may say we we want that and then that's how you really do it you you want you don't want to push something on somebody you want it to be done where they like it I, I, I totally agree with you I remember 25 30 years ago we were talking about uh, green space uh, trails and things like that and the ag side Oh, and I came from an ag side, you know, <laughs> don't mess with my fences, don't mess with my cows, and I, you want me to do what? Now, how much that has changed over the years. Yes. And, and oftentimes, um, seeing is believing. Um, <clears throat> people that have that kind of vision, and, and I think all of us have vision in different areas of life. Um, there's been great men and women, great minds. You, you mentioned Jane, your your sweet wife. Um, 
whether it was vision or she, this is where I'm living, and if you don't <laughs> like it, you're going you're gonna to be a, a young lawyer in someplace else because I'm staying here. But, but we've all had those experiences, but having and creating that vision is critical mass uh, for the future. In the three minutes we've got left, um, dig deep into your heart and soul. What's, uh, it's hard to quantify, but what are the things that you'd really like to be known for? Oh, Other than goodness. a good dad, a good <laughs> husband, and a grandpa. Those, those are things that are just inert. Uh, they're one of the um, elements of life, I call, and uh, that, you know, the uh, periodic table, if, if you remember that. Remember that? I do remember ago. it. <laughs> uh, we all had that. But, you know, there's, 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 there's this thing in life, there's a great poem that I heard many years ago, read at a funeral, and I've read it several times. It's called The Dash. It's, uh, it's between the day you're born and the day you uh, passed away on this earth. And your whole life's in that dash. It's just that one little dash. And I've never forgot that poem. I love poems. And uh, so I, I, you, you try to ask people, what do you want to be known for? What's, what's in your dash beside the dad jobs business and all that? <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to, and I'm putting you on the spot, but it's it's tough. Well, it, that that is that is hard um, to to talk about it from that perspective because what, what I what what I have enjoyed is I love this community. I fell in love with it. Me too. Jane had the vision, and I fell deeply in love. And uh, I like um, efforts to serve the community. What I've liked though is that that what uh, has been fun for me is to be collaborative and have a broad group of people because it takes a broad group of people. It takes a diverse section of your community to make it better. And, and for me, working alongside of so many other great Franklin citizens, whether they were politicians or nonprofit leaders or community volunteers or civic leaders, that has, it, it, we have a unique place and that so many people have a love for this Williamson County and they have a sense of how to make it better for the next generation and the generation after that. And, and so I, as I look back, I, I hope uh, uh, that I will be uh, one of those soldiers that, that got to work alongside with others in a collective way. Julian Bibb. A uh, man's lived in our community now for 40 years. Yes. Uh, raised his family here and is enjoying being with his grandch and grandchildren and in those uh, hanging up his cleats, retiring from his <laughs> professional work. So call him, put him to work or something. That's great. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> Thank great. you, Julian, Thank for you. everything you've done and we will continue to do. And thanks for taking a little time out today to be with us. Thank you, Rogers. Have a good day. I'm Rogers Anderson. It's Country Pride Countywide at the Williamson County Fair, returning August 4th through 12th. This year, there's a special memorial honoring the brave men and women who gave their lives in the War on Terror. Be sure to stop by and pay tribute. Returning attractions include all-time favorites such as Little Ones Farming, Children's Barnyard, Livestock Shows, and Fireworks Displays. New this year, you'll find a high dive show, an exciting wild science exhibit, and much more. Check out WilliamsonCountyFair.org and show your Country Pride Countywide.